In today's show, we'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis. And quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, Bitcoin was sent by God to un-F our money and stop wars. Preach. We'll also be discussing analyst sees Bitcoin rally to a new all-time high around the halving, which is only four days away, family. 420, let's go. Says Bitcoin is mirroring a pre-ETF movement. We'll also be discussing analytics firm Glassnode. Says Bitcoin euphoria phase is still young. I'll be explaining why. We'll also be discussing breaking news. Germany's largest federal bank to offer crypto custody services. I'll be breaking down this latest report, as well as big news coming out of Hong Kong. They officially approved their first Bitcoin and Ether. ETFs. I'll be breaking down the latest here, as well as Bitcoin can skyrocket to 650 million. I mean, my apologies, 650,000 this cycle top, according to on-chain analyst Willy Wu. I'll be breaking down his latest prediction. Uh, we'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. <music> Anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also, pump the likes. It helps pump the stream, helping out tremendously with the algo. It's always greatly appreciated, fam. Today is pod episode number 1610. I'm your host, JV. It's April 15th, 2024, roughly four to five days away from Bitcoin halving 2024. So you already know. Big news today as well. Uh, the ETFs have officially been approved out of Hong Kong, the first spot Ethereum ETF in history, as well as Bitcoin ETF. And it's a different type of, which we'll be breaking down later here in the show. So stick around. But let's kick it off with our market watch as we do every day. Everything back in the green. Hallelujah. Uh, we got Bitcoin trading above 65,100 at the time of the live stream. We got Ether trading just under 3,200 and virtually everything currently pumping. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. The market cap is climbing back. We're at 2.35 trillion with almost 118 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance, a solid 54% with the Ether dominance at 16.1%. How high do you think the Bitcoin dom will climb uh, for this cycle? Let me know. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, we got Core, AIOZ, Pendle, and Ondu. Now, which alts in particular are you guys most bullish on for this bull run? Holla at your boy. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective on the daily, you can see the bulk of the entire market crushing it right now in the green, only a, a few in the red. And zooming out on the monthly bloodshed. And I think this is a given considering alts have been running crazily over the past uh, six months. So this is a humbling, in my opinion, as Bitcoin dominance continues to gain momentum. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're currently rated a 74 in greed, yesterday 72, last week 76 in extreme greed, and last month an 81 in extreme greed. We keep an eye on this because the higher this goes, the more likely of a correction. And checking out the Bitcoin having countdown, having date, uh, time, uh, is scheduled to be April 20th. How lit will that be on 420 family block 840,000? As soon as that happens, it's official. So it may happen literally this sat stack and Saturday, which would be on 420. If it happens on the 19th, and it'll be on Friday. But either way, the having is here. Are you guys pretty excited about that? Let me know. We're currently on block. Uh, what is it? 839,361. So as soon as this hits. 840,000, which means we're only 600 or so blocks away. That's when the halving officially occurs. Uh, and currently, the market cap for Bitcoin specifically is sitting at 1.27 trillion. And you can currently trade $1 for 1,546 Satoshis. Just note, this number is likely to shrink smaller and smaller. You're not going to be able to get 1,500 Satoshis for a dollar post having. You know what I mean? Especially when we start ripping once again with our next leg up. So take advantage of it. Uh, eventually, you'll only be able to get maybe 100 Satoshis uh, for a dollar. And if not this cycle, then by next cycle. But you already know it's a coming. So stack sats 
accordingly. Without further ado, let's dive into today's Bitcoin technical analysis, aka astrology for men. Check out some of the charts and what's popping right now in the market. Here you're looking at the one hour chart, Bitcoin circle 65.5 at the April 15th Wall Street Open as traders lick their wounds, just like Nipsey, after the weekend Bitcoin price wash out. That's right. Uh, trading view tracked the comparatively calm start to the US trade five trading week. The lack of volatility contrasted firmly with scenes from the weekend in which Bitcoin dropped to near 61,000. This came in the form of a knee-jerk reaction to geopolitical instability in the Middle East, with Bitcoin avoiding some of the deeper losses that the alts experienced. Now, traders turned to what many saw as a difficult period to navigate in the short term. Bitcoin's block subsidy halving was just days away. That's right. Hopefully on 420 on Saturday. And an event that traditionally brings unsettled traditional conditions or trading conditions into its own right. Uh, quoting analyst material indicators, Keith Allen from material indicators. With the halving coming up in less than a week, I won't be surprised to see a pump to the halving followed by a dump after the halving to shake out weak hands before the next leg up. Also says, of course, escalating geopolitical tensions might alter the trajectory. So certainly tuned into that. Now, Allen also highlighted changing exchange order book liquidity conditions suggesting overheated resistance or overhead resistance above 70,000 would remain in place until the bulls could lure the bids closer to the current spot price. And data from Coin Glass showed Bitcoin eating into the bid liquidity at and below 66,000 at this time. Quoting SKU Analytics, lots of systemic retests this morning, important day, I think, for the crypto market to establish the next phase for direction. He also highlighted the need to preserve exponential moving averages on both the four hour and daily time frames. Bitcoin's RSI further needed to return above the central 50 level, as he points out. Now, we're also going to dive deep into Hong Kong, but this is big news as they approved both spot Bitcoin Ether and Bitcoin ETF. So this is another major catalyst, which could be pumping the markets right now. And I'm going to dive deeper into that later. But according to Dan Crypto Trades, here's what he recently tweeted. Today's Bitcoin sent out by GBTC comes out to be 1.6 thousand Bitcoin, which is 105 million worth. Friday's ETF net flows came in at negative 55 million. IBIT has 111.1 million, still leading the rest by a Bid, big margin. And GBTC saw an outflow of 166 million and now has 319,000 of 625,000 Bitcoin left. So from here on out, I'll start reporting the ETF flows only as the Bitcoin sent from Grayscale has not had as much importance as previously and can be a bit random. ETF flows remain important and I'll report on those as long as they are as high and impactful as they are now. So there you have it. Now, someone shared, this is rifle reviews. He put, no currency or hard asset can ever fix a problem of war. War has been a constant since the beginning and war will never stop until the end of this age. The cure for the hearts and souls of the world is the one and only savior, Lord Jesus Christ, none other. Uh, Max Kaiser retweeted and wrote, false. Bitcoin was sent by God to un -F our money and stop wars. And some would say, Bitcoin is God hacking humanity. Let me know your thoughts on that. Appreciate the insights. But anyways, fam, next story of the day. Let's discuss this having rally around the corner here. Um, closely follow crypto strategist thinks the Bitcoin is positioned to surge to a new all-time high following last week's drop to six, around 60,000. I think it was like 61 and some change. Uh, Calio shared on X, the Bitcoin appears to be mirroring its December 2023 to January 2024 price action when the market anticipated the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs. According to the trader, he sees Bitcoin Bitcoin rallying to a new record high around the halving when the Bitcoin miner rewards are slashed in half. However, he predicts that Bitcoin will see a deep correction after the rally before igniting a steep upside move. Quoting the analyst here, my favorite price structure comparison I'm paying attention to right now heading into the halving is the December pre-ETF time frame. Could easily see us running the highs again from here leading into the halving later this week, followed by a sell-off and then a grind back. To new highs. The analyst shares an hourly chart, which you can see here, a Bitcoin before the ETFs were approved. Now, he subsequently shares another chart, which you can see, that suggests Bitcoin may be following the same pattern. The trader is also keeping a close watch on BNB, the utility token of the BNB chain ecosystem, which is the native token of 
Binance. According to Calio, BNB looks poised to take out its diagonal resistance and rally to a new all-time high near the 1,000 mark. As he shares here, BNB still looks primed to break out of this range. So there you have it, family. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment. Next story of the day, we discussed the having rally. Let's discuss a little euphoria, shall we? Who doesn't want a little euphoria in their lives? Uh, blockchain analytics firm uh, says Bitcoin is still up in the euphoria phase, despite the recent correction based on on-chain metrics and their new report. The firm says Bitcoin's current down Word price action is still tame compared to the previous cycles, suggesting Bitcoin is in the earlier stages of a bull run. Quitting him here. If we return to the magnitude of drawdowns we alluded to earlier, we can see that despite the large-scale profit taking by existing hodlers, the magnitude of the pullbacks remains historically small. So if we compare the all-time high break in prior cycles, it could be argued that the current euphoria phase is still relatively young. Now, previous euphoria phases have seen numerous price drawdowns exceeding 10% with the majority being much deeper, with 25% being commonplace. That's right, a few weeks ago, after tapping the current all-time high of 73.8, we corrected almost 20%. I think it was in the neighborhood of 17 to 18%, but it's a normal thing. The current market has seen just two 10%-ish plus corrections since the all-time high was broken in that ballpark. Glassnode says that based on the on-chain analysis of the industry's biggest exchanges, the Bitcoin strength over the last year is largely due to the inflows from the spot market. The firm also says the Bitcoin shorter term correction is being supported by the new demand from fresh entrants into the market. Quoting him again, or I should say the analytics platform, the strong market performance of Bitcoin over the last 12 months is supported by a remarkable uptick in both spot trade volumes and on-chain flows associated with the exchanges. By analyzing the cumulative volume delta, we can also gauge that the demand side has been remarkably strong, albeit with bids patiently taking the maker side rather than the taker side. And with the market now above the 2021 all-time high, profit taken has ramped up but it is cooling down in the recent weeks. The balance of wealth is approximately balanced between long-term hodlers and new demand, suggesting the euphoria phase is still relatively early from a historical perspective. So there you have it, my crypto fam. Let me know if you agree or disagree with some of that on-chain data. Next story of the day, here's what's happening in Germany. Uh, headline reads, Germany's largest federal bank to offer crypto custody services, according to this report. That's right, Germany's largest federal bank called the Lance Bank Baden Wurttemberg <laughs> will start to offer crypto custody solutions for the second half of this year. The bank will start offering crypto custody services to institutional clients in partnership with the Austria-based Bitpanda crypto exchange. Let's go Bitpanda. The German federal bank has been seeing increasing corporate demand for digital asset custody, said their managing director for corporate banking at their bank. And they shared with Bloomberg the demand from our corporate customers for digital assets is increasing. Now, the bank says they'll tap Bitpanda's institutional custody solution for its offering. Bitpanda Custody is a crypto custody platform with DeFi capabilities registered with the UK's Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, according to the Bitpanda homepage. The partnership will be uh, enable the bank to tap the Bitpanda digital asset platform, custody services, and relevant licenses. Gonzalo Lamas, the head of global communication at Bitpanda, shared the following. As part of the corp cooperation, LBBW leverages our investment as a service, infrastructure, and services, which is used to source and provide a custody services for cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ether, and other digital assets. The collaboration aims to enhance the LBBW's digital asset offerings, ensuring high security and innovative solutions for their corporate clients. Now, their bank isn't the only German bank mulling crypto services. We also have Deutsche Bank, which has also been working on digital asset custody services since September of 2023. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, please do let me know. I don't really know. I don't speak German. A uh, German, uh, but anyways, in February, DZ Bank, Germany's second largest bank, announced its plans to launch a crypto trading pilot later in 2024. The bank unveiled this digital asset custody platform in November 2023. The bank in Europe's largest economy are preparing for the markets in crypto assets regulation that will take full effect December of this year as the first comprehensive legal framework for the crypto industry. Meanwhile, crypto exchanges will then become 
fully regulated entities from the end of 2024. Uh, quoting them again, 2024 is the year of MICA, and the whole EU will now have a comprehensive legal framework for crypto assets. Crypto asset services and crypto asset service providers. Now, crypto exchanges are a type of uh, crypto asset service provider under MICA and will become fully regulated in December of 2024. They also say the consultation will determine how exchanges and other CASPs from countries outside the EU might provide services to EU citizens without a license and how these services should be marketed in Europe. The outcomes of this consultation will be critical for MICA's implementation in December of this year. So there you have it. Crypto fam, does anyone here live in Germany? Do let me know. Anyways, now for some breaking news, you guys. Uh, big news today. Uh, the China ETS, specifically out of Hong Kong here, so not in the mainland, but we'll break this down and then Wooly Woo's latest 650,000 Bitcoin price prediction. Then we'll dive into some live Q&A. So here we go. Big news, family. Hong Kong has become the latest country to approve spot ETF for Bitcoin and Ethereum with local regulators issuing approvals to at least three local issuers. The Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission, known as the SFC, conditionally approved its first spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs April 15th, which is today, according to Reuters. At least three offshore Chinese asset managers, including Hong Kong units of Harvest Fund Management, Basara Asset Management, and China Asset Management, will launch their spot Bitcoin and Ether ETF soon. Let's go. Becerra will launch its spot crypto ETFs in collaboration with Hong Kong based Hashkey Capital. Then OSL Digital Securities, a licensed digital asset platform in Hong Kong, will act as the sub custodian for China AMC and Harvest. Now, Hong Kong Securities Regulator issued a conditional authorization letter to an ETF application if it generally satisfies its requirements subject to various conditions, including fee payments, document filing, and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange listing approval. The Hong Kong regulator reportedly approved that the spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs will be launched as in-kind ETFs, meaning new ETF shares can be issued using Bitcoin and Ethereum. The in-kind creation model is opposed to the cash create redemption model, pay attention, which allows issuers to create new ETF shares only with cash. Spot Bitcoin ETFs currently use the cash created model in the US as local security regulators opted for this redemption method and particularly the SEC. Uh, quoting them here, the in-kind subscription model for the Spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs in Hong Kong represents a substantial innovation. OSL board chairman and CEO Patrick Pan shared, this mechanism enhances market liquidity by allowing the direct exchange of the asset for ETF shares, reducing reliance on cash settlements and facilitating uninterrupted trading flows. He also added, this principle is essential for ensuring market stability and is consistent with practices in both digital and traditional asset ETFs. Now, he also noted that receiving an approval in principle signifies the firms have cleared most of the crucial vetting processes and brings them closer to the launch. However, it is still early to expect when exactly the spot Bitcoin ETF will start trading in Hong Kong. He noted the dates are not yet confirmed. However, all parties involved are diligently working to expedite the launch. The initiation of these ETFs is expected to significantly boost capital inflow into the digital asset market in Hong Kong. Now, SFC, Becerra, and Harvest, uh, for a comment, uh, were, they were approached and did not receive a response, but we do know the new ETF approvals follow expectations that the SFC will greenlight the first batch of spot Bitcoin ETFs on April 15th, which seems to already be official. And uh, I'm actually interested if I can find, I think uh, Balchunas or one of the ETF analysts tweeted something regarding it, and I, I may have retweeted it. So let me read that to you if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Eric Balchunas tweeted three hours ago, latest on Hong Kong spot ETFs. They have been approved to exist, but not launch yet. Rumor has it launching next week week. So not to compete with the Dubai conference. Don't expect a lot of the flows. I saw one estimate 25 billion. That's insane. We think they'll be lucky to get 500 million. Here's why. And then he lists all the reasons. I'm not going to read them all to you. I'll read you the first two. Hong Kong ETF market is tiny, only 50 billion, and Chinese locals cannot buy these at least officially. And number two, the three issuers that were approved are tiny. No big fish like Black Rock involved yet. 
But anyways, fam, we'll see how this likely uh, plays out. Let me know if you're bullish for these Hong Kong ETFs. Now for our feature story of the day. On-chain analyst Willie Wu says Bitcoin can skyrocket to 650000 This market cycle top if this specifically happens. So let's break it down and let's start with the tweet he just recently shared. And shout out to Willie Wu. I'm a fan, always have been. He wrote five hours ago, the new Bitcoin ETFs bring price targets of 91000 at the bear market bottom. Not too shabby. And 650000 at the bull market top once ETF investors have fully deployed, according to the asset manager recommendations. These are very conservative numbers. Bitcoin will beat the gold cap when ETFs have completed their role. And I think earlier we said the uh, the gold e not gold ETS, but the gold market cap right now is over 15 trillion. He also said, note, these are not targets for the cycle. It takes a long time for capital deployments to complete. Well, thank you for the asterisk there. Uh, back of the envelope calculations, he wrote number one, 100 trillion managed by asset managers. They generally have a 2% allocation recommendation. See Fidelity. This number will rise over time, but today it's a 2 trillion allocation into Bitcoin. Number two, Bitcoin currently holds 561 million of investments. We can measure this on chain. New total will bring it to 2.56 trillion of investment. Number three, we can use the NVRV to calculate market cap versus money invested. This ratio is 5x the bull market tops and 0.7x in bear market bottoms. Number four, this translates to capitalizations of 12.8 trillion and 1.8 trillion, respectively, or 650,000 or 91,000 per Bitcoin. Number five, I've excluded other self-custody inflows. So this is absolutely a lower bound estimation. Self-custody inflows are way bigger right now. And number six, Bitcoin will certainly exceed gold capitalization by the time asset manager capital has deployed. Gold went on a 12-year bull run when its ETF was approved, and now is Bitcoin's turn. Let's go. So there you have it. And let's dive deeper into the article published off the back of that tweet with the prediction. The headline reads, Bitcoin can skyrocket to 650000 if this happens, according to Willy Wu. There you go. Now, the substantiate hit to substantiate his claim, the Bitcoin analyst elaborated some calculations based on allocation recommendations, self-custody inflows, the market value to realize value, which is the NVRV, which is the ratio between the market value of Bitcoin and its realized value. We will also explain that asset managers like Fidelity are advocating for modest crypto portfolio allocations of just 2%. He makes a good point because we have seen a study uh, published, it was a couple of years ago, and I co covered it here on the channel many times. Uh, BlackRock's recommended Bitcoin allocation investment uh, into the biddies is like, 84.9%. So you do the math. And so this is very modest allocation at 2%. Now, such firms manage roughly 100 trillion, which leaves up to 2 trillion to go to Bitcoin. That's if it was only 2%. The number will increase over time as Bitcoin sees more adoption. Facts. Bitcoin currently holds over 561 billion of investment. So adding the 2 trillion will bring the total to 2.56 trillion, significantly enlarging the assets ecosystem. The figure could be much more if self-custody inflows are even considered. Wu says self-custody inflows are much bigger at the moment, hence the 2.56 trillion mark, uh, target is the lower bound estimate. Now let's discuss exceeding gold's market cap using the MVRV ratio to calculate market capitalizations versus money invested. The target investment figure would be multiplied by five in bull market tops and 0.7 in bear season bottoms. This would leave the crypto market with a capitalization of 12.8 trillion and a top of 1.8 trillion at the bottom or $91,650,000 per Bitcoin. Wu clarified the Bitcoin is not expected to hit the 91,000 and 650,000 targets during the cycle. As such, capital deployments take a long time. However, Bitcoin will inevitably exceed gold's market cap when the ETFs have achieved their full potential. Uh, quoting them again, these are very conservative numbers. Bitcoin will beat the gold cap when the ETFs have completed their role. Bitcoin will certainly exceed gold capitalization by the time the asset manager capital has deployed. Gold went on a 12-year bull run when its ETF was approved. Now it's Bitcoin's turn. Let's freaking go. So what are your thoughts? On Bitcoin hitting a target of 90,000 to 650,000 as outlined by on-chain analysts, Willy Woo, I can see personally Bitcoin reaching a bear scenario of 222,000 this year, as high as 750,000 or anywhere 
in between. So it's going to be a very interesting year this year and next year, actually both years, as typically we hit the cycle peak the year preceding the halving. But many people are saying this halving is different. Uh, for example, the major difference Clearly, uh, we didn't have the institutional FOMO in 2021 when we tapped the 69,000 all-time high. Also consider that 2021 was uh, a long time ago. That's like uh, three years ago we tapped 69. And right now we're trading at a discount of 64,000. So many would say this bull market is just getting started. I mean, at least to the stock to flow, it showed you on March 1st, we printed the first red dot, which signifies we're officially in bull market territory, expecting many more red dots being printed this year and next year. Another major difference with this cycle for the first time in Bitcoin history, we broke the previous all-time high pre having. That's right. We broke the all-time high a few times already. We tapped 69,000 and then we tapped 70,000 and the current all-time high is $73,800. So previous cycles, the three previous cycles that come before us, 2012, 2016, and 2020, it always took us post having to break the previous all-time high. So many would say, for those reasons, things are much different. But I want to know your thoughts. How high can you see the Bitcoin price climbing realistically for this cycle, 2024, 2025? Can you see a 220,000 bitty? Can you see 500,000? What are your thoughts? Let me know. I'm going to read these comments out loud. Hillbilly Will says Bitcoin starts to slog to 100,000. It's unstoppable. Carol says I can see 650. Send it. Love it, Carol. Cheers to that. What good does it do if you never sell, says Bill Hokey. Well, I guess we all have different goals uh, in life. Uh, my goal is to, you know what I mean, um, pass on generational wealth to my children so that she can pass it on to her children so they're not enslaved, right? And they can live a, uh, you know what I mean, a freedom life freedom lifestyle. Whereas, I mean, some people have goals to maybe buy a house. JV already owns a house, right? So it all depends upon your personal goals. Uh, I personally feel it won't make any sense to sell Bitcoin. Even if it was a million dollars, hypothetically speaking right now, if you had the opportunity to borrow against it or do some creative things, would you really sell it, right? The question I pose you is, um, why would you sell your Bitcoin for the inferior fiat money? What are you going to do with the fiat money? Now, if you just have money you need burning a hole in your pocket, you need to buy something with it. You have some attachment to something physical, whether it's a car, a house, maybe you want to pay off a loan, maybe, you know, debt, whatever it may be. And shout out to Haran for subscribing to the pod. I totally understand that, right? Uh, however, teach their own. We're all in a different situation. So JV, no plans of selling. However, who knows? You know what I mean? We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll want a new house eventually, you know, 10 years or something like that. And I will borrow against it or something. I don't know. I can't predict the future. But one thing is for certain, I think most Bitcoiners have no intention of ever selling. They just want it. You can use it as collateral. Uh, Bitcoin being the most pristine form of collateral. And eventually all the banks will want your pristine collateral. Mark my words, they don't want your fiat. Fiat is useless at the end of the day. So just me thinking out loud here, but let me know your thoughts. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. One dollar equals 22 cents. That is the perfect example right there. One Bitcoin will always be equivalent to one Bitcoin. 15 years ago, one Bitcoin was equal to one Bitcoin. 1,500 years from now, one Bitcoin will be equivalent to one Bitcoin. However, one dollar is 22 cents. Those who save in fiat we, what do we call them, folks? You already know. Don't make me play the jammy jam. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets out of profit. Nope. <laughs> 175,000 top. A lot of ETF buyers will have weak hands, says Expos John. Conservative, 150,000. The bulls, 275,000, says Mankey. Thanks for sharing. I like your prediction of 222,000 JV. I'm banking on it. I sold my carpet cleaning business a few years ago. Semi-retired now. Congratulations, Don George. Let's go. People, 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 people that use, that use, that use fiat, 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 fiat currency. currency. Deflationary asset into the future. Many don't sell with the big profits. Facts. Preach, says VZ. Wait until the U.S. banks will allow us to borrow against the biddies. Uh... HODL mode will free you from the government. 
Fiat. That's right. Hodling has so many advantages. So many advantages. Not even funny, right? As a store of store of store of store of value. You got that right, Jennifer. What do we call them, folks? We call them poor. One dollar equals twenty-two cents. Tell them. We call them poor. 